Hi, this is Trey Pastor, and welcome to, uh, since it's Saturday, welcome to my reviews, uh, reviewing two movies as usual. Uh, okay, so let's get right into it. Um, the two movies I'm reviewing are right here, and I'll start with uh, this one, Despicable Me, Part 2. Okay, I saw the first movie, of course, loved it, you know, earlier this year, I think, and I really enjoyed it, of course, so the Part 2 came out this summer, I didn't get to see it in theaters, but it came on video, uh, you know, Blu-ray, I think this past week. So I bought it and watched it this morning, and <laughs> let me say I enjoyed it. I don't think it's as good as the the first one. I think the first one was just an original story, but but this one is uh, quite good. Of course, you have Gru. <laughs> now he's an ex supervillain played by Steve Carell. Okay, and he's still taking care of his three daughters, Margot, uh, Edith, and um, Jillian. Uh, excuse me, not Jillian. Edith, Agnes, <laughs> and Margot. He's taking still you know selling in his father and stuff, and they even saw a nice segment of him, you know, having a little vacuum barbecue or birthday party, you know, for the youngest one, um, for Agnes, okay, and, but in the meantime, they also see at the same time, uh, uh, a secret Arctic laboratory has been literally pulled by a giant magnet, literally, you know, from the Arctic, it's been stolen, so this uh, new anti-villain league, or AVL, as they call themselves, they recruit uh, Dr. Guru, <laughs> since he's an ex-villain, and he would know villains, okay, they get a, a special agent, uh, uh, kind of an eccentric agent, Lucy Wilde, to, um, I guess, <laughs> uh, induct uh, Guru and uh, bring him to their underground uh, headquarters, and they basically want him to uh, go undercover in the mall to, uh, to see if they can fish out a suspect, you know, who stole this base. Uh, and I think they, the way they they kind of track them is because there was this uh, substance that they found that was um, uh, substance that was found, by, you know, I guess in their wreckage. So that's how they're going to track. You know, he has a device, so he's going to track. That's how. It, and the, the suspects are people that work in the mall. So he sets up a, like a bake shop, and he's supposed to. Uh, and that's how they're supposed to him with Agent Wild are supposed to um, find out who stole the, you know, the secret Arctic laboratory. Okay, and like I said, this movie is enjoyable, and it's it's really dark. And again, the animation is top notch in this. And of course, you have the main still hanging around. Of course, you still have um, you have um, Doctor Nefario. He's he's still actually, but he, this character kind of, you know, is bored with the whole jam thing, and he sort of leaves. <laughs> okay, and goes off on his own. But again, you have a uh, Gru working with um, <laughs> with a. Uh, Agent Lucy Wilde to discover who actually stole the base, and um, during the course of the investigation, he kind of recognizes uh, a guy named Eduardo who runs a, like a I guess it's a Mexican restaurant. He thinks he looks familiar to him, like an ex villain called El Macho, which is hilarious how they show like the backstory about how El Macho was this big bad villain and how he died. I think they showed him going down on a shark with explosives. <laughs> into the heart of a volcano, and, and so he's presumed dead. But Gru thinks that might be him. But of course, you know, everybody else thinks, no, that's crazy, that's not him. And in the meantime, they actually arrest somebody else for the stealing of the Arctic base. Okay, and basically the story is about, uh, about Gru, <laughs> you know, finding out who stole the Arctic base, him raising his daughters and stuff, and dealing with, you know, them growing up. Because the oldest daughter, you know, she meets the son of, um, of, of um, Eduardo, uh, uh, which is Antonio, and they kind of take a life to each other. So, of course, you know, Gru being an overprotective dad doesn't like him instantly. And, of course, he wants uh, Eduardo to be the one behind the thing so he can stop, you know, his son from hitting on his daughter. And it's a really fun, sweet movie. Like I said, I don't think it's as good as the, the other movie, uh, the original one, the movie, but this one is, has its own sweet charm. And it's, like I said, animation is beautiful, and it has a nice family message in it, too, which really... It's really sweet, and like of course the the uh, at the same time also there's one other thing I've got to mention, the uh, the minions start disappearing. You see them, you know, they, they have these segments where they all of a sudden you know they start disappearing, <laughs> and then that's part of the mystery too to figure out why they're disappearing. And so like I said, it's a really sweet sweet movie, and like I said, I don't think it's good as the original, but it's still a sweet sweet movie. <laughs> and like I said, Steve Carell is great, Christine Wiig is, and even Benjamin Bratt as Eduardo uh, is great too. And like I said, all the three little young actresses that play his daughters are, are sweet. And like I said, of course, you have the minions. And it's a really sweet, sweet movie, and I really liked it. So I'm going to give this 
this pick will be a 7.5, okay? Like I said, I don't think it's as good as the original, but still entertaining and worth totally worth owning and checking out. Okay, so that's 7.5 for me. Hi, I'm sorry I got cut off there. The video kind of went out. Um, anyway, the second movie I was talking about is uh, 1960s, The Fall of the House of Usher. This is a Roger Corman movie produced and directed by Roger Corman, uh, starring Vincent Price. Uh, Mark Damon, Myrna Fahey, and Henry Ellaby. Uh, this is uh, based on the Edgar Allan Poe uh, story. Uh, okay, again, this story uh, uh, kind of begins with uh, a character named Philip Winthrop. He's uh, arriving at the Usher Mansion to meet meet his uh, fiance Madeline. Uh, upon arriving, of course, he sees that the land is barren. Uh, the 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 mansion, Usher Mansion, is in disrepair. It has a crack in it. Uh, there he meets uh, Madeline's brother, Roderick Usher, who basically tells him, there's no way you're going to marry my sister. Uh, I, us, the Ushers are cursed. Basically tells him that the Ushers are cursed. They, um, all of the past relatives have been murderers and thieves and harlots. And even the house that they're in is cursed, that they're fated to die, him and Madeline. So there's no use to really marrying her because she's fated to die with this curse upon them. Basically, he's telling them this curse on them that they're not fated to live happy lives. Okay, and they're, but of course, Philip is not hearing this, and he's, uh, he wants to marry Marilyn and stuff and take her away from this, of course. And then, you know, Philip to tells him the stories, and of course, Madeline even shows him the crypts, you know, in the basement where his, their past relatives have been buried, and even her own crypt, her and, and Philip's crypts are down there waiting for them for when they die. Which he thinks, of course, is morose. You know that they're consumed with death and thinking that nothing good will happen to them. And Philip's determined to, uh, you know, shake her from this. And I absolutely love this movie. This movie is just—it's uh, the whole atmosphere of this movie is great. And I was a big Edgar Allan Poe fan growing up. And I saw this movie years ago, I think on AMC, and I absolutely. Uh, fell in love with it, and it's just a great story, uh, just, uh, excuse me, uh, um, just one that you want to watch, and it's, like I said, Vincent Price is absolutely great in this, it's this morose uh, character, you know, uh, you know, and the script is, uh, you know, is by Richard Matheson, who's a very, you know, famous, uh, you know, writer, and it's it just like I said, there's some things for those who read the Edgar Allan Poe story. They changed a few things in the story to, I guess, to, for the movie to make it more, uh, uh, I guess, more, uh, more of a. It's just to change it around a little bit to make it more. Because I think in the original story, there's a narrator that tells a story who's a friend of the of the family. And this one, they have a, uh, you know, Philip Winchester. Make they make him a fiance of a uh, of Madeline in the story. I think that's the only really change they make of it. And I don't think there's a relative, I don't think the servant is in it, but I'm not sure about that. It's been a while since I read the story. Anyway, um, like I say, Vincent Price gives a great performance, and also, you know, you get Mark Damon as Philip Winthrop, who's, you know, fighting against all these morose thoughts, trying, you know, determined to get his, the woman that he loves out of the house and, and get her out of this mindset where she thinks that, like, like Philip, that they're going to. Not, you know, not like Philip, like uh, like Roger, that that the Ushers are fated to die. You know, he's trying to convince her, you know, to come with him and and leave this house. He's determined to uh, get her out. Okay, and I don't want to tell you what else happens after that because that's part of the story. And it's a really, like I said, a great atmosphere in this by Roger Corman. And you can tell it was done on a low budget, but it's you know, like I said, it's only a four-person uh, movie, but it's really chilling. And I guess the character, the house would be. I guess the fifth character, okay, and, but it's a real chilling story, and Vincent Price is at his best, you know, is this morose character who's basically, you know, saying that they're fated to die, and there's nothing they can do to avoid it, and that's what's going to happen, and it's a really good watch, I think the movie's like 79 minutes, but it's good, and I want to get the other ones, The Pit and the Pendulum, which I saw in The Raven, which is enough, two other uh, Edgar Allan Poe stories are really good, and Vincent Price is great in this, and I like the whole atmosphere of this. And I would give this movie an 8 out of 10. That's how much I really like this movie, The Fall of the House of Russia, an 8 out of 10. Really enjoyable. Definitely worth watching. 
Okay, and again, Despicable Me 2 is part 2. Uh, it's not as good as the original, but I enjoyed it. And like I said, uh, it has a sweet charm to it. And definitely worth picking up. Excuse me. Like I said, not as good as the original, but it's still good and still worth watching and owning. I think it's just that, just that sweet. And you'll really, really enjoy it. And I would highly recommend it. Sorry, you didn't need to hear the rest of that anyway. Uh, I have some important Star Wars news. Uh, let me get right into it. Uh, <clears throat> my good friend, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, sorry, I have a little something in my throat. Uh, my good friend, uh, Alan Horn, you know, vice president of Walt Disney Studios, uh, said the work is not yet completed on the uh, script for the upcoming Star Wars Episode 7, but the studio expects J.J. Abrams, that son of a bitch, and Lawrence Kasdan to have it ready by January. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> and he also said, my good friend Alan Horn, or Alan, or Al as I call him, has also said that while no budget has been officially decided on for Episode 7, it's likely to be in the ballpark around 200 million, give or take a few hundred million, you know, 200 million. And he also reiterated that plans call for a new Star Wars film every year, alternating between saga chapters and single character spinoffs. <coughs> character spinoffs. <coughs> Vader. <coughs> Darth Vader. <movie. coughs> I'm sorry, I just wanted to uh, uh, pass that on. And also, of course, you know, Star Wars Episode 7 will be directed by that son of a bitch, J.J. Uh, Abrams, and also reproduced alongside Lucas Films' uh, absolutely stunningly beautiful President Kathleen Kennedy. Okay, and um, the film, of course, will be filmed in 2D, and of course, 3D theaters is, is coming in December 18th, 2015. Okay, I just wanted to uh, pass that on, and, uh, you know, you didn't want to hear the rest of Trey Pastor's rambling anyway. Okay, just wanted to pass that Star Wars news on. Okay, um, so that's it for now. Uh, let's go back to my music. <laughs> 